Classical art forms are like vast oceans. A dip in its pristine waters and you will be swimming in it till eternity. It's a work of a lifetime and for some many lifetimes. Have you ever watched a beautiful performance and wondered what must be going in to be able to perform at that level of excellence? Clearly we all know the response is riyas. Do you think the word riyas can be confined to the word practice? To me it has way more connotations and references. Don't you wish they told you what exactly they do when they say hum riyas karte hain? Well these are the questions that intrigued me and I decided to get some answers. Not to keep them with me but to share with the world at large the vision of these artists their secrets hence the series raz riyaz ka namaskaram and a very warm welcome to each of you in this episode of raz riyaz ka season 2 and i'm extremely elated to have with us today the dynamic bharatanatyam virtuoso who stake in the bharatanatyam scene by a storm with his intelligent choreography and innate sense of humor and of course brilliant dancing so please welcome parshanath upadhyay thank you for agreeing to be a part of raz riyaz ka my pleasure so i know this is a very commonly asked question but uh, there are many people sometimes who don't know this about you and in this case it is me how did your journey begin so from little bit what i've uh, read about you i know that you know you had a very um, how do you say a nice um, growing you know that the soil that you need as a dancer has been very fertile for arts but there have been naysayers and you've had your own share of ups and downs in that journey so if you can take us a little bit into that um first of all thank you prachi for having me here I mean, in the platform on YouTube. Otherwise, I'm in my house only. Guess what? We are always. <laughs> But that's the idea of Raz Riyaz Kam. Right. I wanted to go to each one of the artist's face because you know you get that feel where okay, this is where this idea would have germinated. Yeah. To answer to your question, I started in uh, Belgaum, and Belgaum being a town which is bordering Karnataka and Maharashtra. there's a lot of influence of good hindustani music whether it is harmonium or uh, hindustani vocal but very little bit of uh, carnatic music in influence in belgaum especially bharatanatyam was never uh, heard about there were few dancers um, who used to teach and uh, i think my first uh, teacher would be my mom who had no idea about bharatanatyam and uh, whatever she saw here and there in the movies she uh, used to bring those cassettes and she used to teach me that's how i think my journey actually began as a dancer where she taught me couple of devaranamas in her own style then later on i uh, went to few dance teachers who had very little training in bharatanatyam then i think it was 1988 when uh, my guru ravindra sharma sir came all the way from mysore and settled down in ba- belgaum uh, as a dance teacher in a dance school so from there my actual training of bharatanatyam started i did my uh, arangetram under him i completed few uh, exams under karnataka board and gandharva mahavidyalaya under him and when i moved to bangalore not to dance but to prepare myself for civil service exams competitive exams uh, i moved to bangalore but dancing never stopped learning never stopped for me i think uh, that particular period was very important where i continued learning without performing too much i continued my learning under kiran sir and sandhya ma'am 
and i think it was 2008 where i stopped preparing myself for exams or uh, being part of the same institution i was also a lecturer there uh, i completely took up dance and from there yes the dance company and school is going on there. and they say when uh, student is ready the teacher arrives in 2018 after my first music academy performance i just happened to meet sudha aunty and after that my life changed and then it's you're just unstoppable <laughs> i don't know so um i didn't see any clock in your house but it must be having 36 hours no <laughs> no clearly because uh, you dance you dance professionally you teach you choreograph you sing you paint you are a doting father and there are i'm sure many other things that i don't know about you so how do you make time for everything and is there something that you dedicate specific hours although you don't seem like somebody who would be doing that but i would just wait for it to come from your mouth <laughs> so how do you just manage all of this uh i think i'm lucky the 24 hours are uh, have three times more value because of shruti and aditya being uh, equally involved with the dance company and but school. the things you are doing you are doing alone only i mean it's right. nice that you're giving them also the due credit <laughs> yeah they are here there i think they can hear me that's why i'm giving the credit <laughs> uh, okay. apart from that i don't think i have a particular schedule mm -hmm. and some days are very 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 hectic and crazy mm. and couple of weeks i will be doing nothing and that is what i like about my work where i'm self employed and i know how much to give rest to my body and how much i can push i know my limitations also but most of the times the motivation comes from nowadays because of the performances mm. that always has been the case in last few years but luckily my students have been the great source of inspiration where i i find myself uh, you know being my best when i dance with them or choreograph with them mm -hmm. or they give back their own ideas i think that has been so far uh, you know supporting thing for me to come on get up you can do it and yes i love teaching uh, and and as you said dance is just a part of me that itself is not my life i love doing lot of other things i might not be doing it professionally and doing great in that but i enjoy doing lot of other things so when you like to do something i don't think you will think about time mm. only when something is uh, really really bothering you or you do not want to do it and you are doing it just for the sake of securing something or doing it for sake of name fame then you will feel that lag but even if i do not dance in any organizations or festivals even for next 5 years i will still be dancing i will still be doing something else which is connected to dance or not whichever gives me happiness that i think that is what uh, is uh, what i want my art form to do even after 10 years from here so uh, connected to this it brings me to my next question what exactly does the word riyaz mean to you i know it's not equated to practice hmm. i think it's just not the same so what does it mean to you for me it means the quality work whatever i am doing uh, and it's not a duration ever been duration if i am not in the mood if uh, mentally i am not there i will never rehearse hmm. and even if it is for 10 15 minutes and what i do in that particular uh, section that matters to me the most hmm. the quality works uh, because i cannot set okay from 8 o'clock morning to 11 i am going to rehearse that is the duration that i have so this is what i am going to do 3 hours of dancing it never works for me i might it might be uh, sometimes 11 o'clock in the night or sometimes in the afternoon if i have the motivation and that is what uh, pushes me and not okay this is my time this is my schedule 8 o'clock to 10 i am supposed to dance if not oh my god what is going to happen i don't think that that will ever work so for me riyaz means quality time and uh, it's not just about 
physically doing something all the time there is lot of uh, things going on especially when you are working on a new project or new work lot of thought process will be there which of course happens even when i am not physically dancing uh, but if you are talking about the riyas physically the riyas part i am more uh, concerned about the script rather than the adavus that i am putting or the patterns that i am putting how it is going so those things take up lot of time at the initial stage but definitely when the if if you are preparing that for a performance there will be lot of more riyas duration will increase but when I, there is absolutely no show then i will be choreographing something with my students nowadays or when it was uh, i think even 10 years back i used to start my uh, practice session with kalari pai to uh, session just to doing it for myself what with whatever little i know and then it would uh, lead to adavus using only your thighs you will fall when the body moves this way and to hold it back with your core the then it would lead to the uh, composition parts uh, i have done so many uh, varanams uh, market music varanams which i have never performed mm. just for just yes just for enjoying the music understanding it and trying to present it i might not i might never do a varanam in the same format mm-hmm. uh, you know uh, it, it is somebody else idea mm-hmm. the uh, audio that you get in the uh, market that is somebody else idea of that particular varanam i may never do it in that way i may i may have more pauses mm-hmm. when i go on stage But so what is your idea of using that music and doing it just for the it's like a it's like an exercise like a physical exercise not or? really uh, along with yes definitely physical exercise definitely there is a way you have to build up your stamina as a dancer only by dancing mm. even if you run for 100 km you will not get the stamina for doing a jati properly exactly. so to get the stamina for doing jati you have you use because you use certain uh, amount of muscles in a certain way it has to be dance itself so that's one op- uh, one purpose is taken care of by that and also to sustain the abhinaya mm. throughout that uh, strenuous mm. so what has happened is now two three things you've touched upon which were def- different different questions for me in my mind okay. but just to kind of elaborate that a little yeah. bit so uh, say for instance you don't have a performance mm. you have nothing to work towards mm. and you've choreographed everything you're not working on the choreo because see now everyone who is watching may not be you know active choreographers right. but if they enter the studio they are always confused that okay what do i do when i want mm. to start so what would you recommend for such students of dance that when you enter the studio what are the basics that you would follow that's point number 1 secondly you also touched upon stamina and clearly like you said and most uh, you know uh, performers do vouch by this that mm. to dance the only thing that you need to do to build stamina is to dance so how do you build stamina for dancing because i just saw in your music academy performance you did 12 and i rewound 3 times to count the number of mandi adavas you did it was 12 so uh, it is something that is uh, it's brilliant and i mean the fact that you do it speaks a lot about what kind of effort has gone into uh, and that to in the second half of the varnam okay point to be noted So there is at least a beginning point or a start point that you can suggest to people who are watching. I think for each artist it works very differently mm. Prachi. True true. Uh because I have gone to the studio sometimes just playing the click sound on the metronome and try to create some uh, physical movements. Uh not necessarily Bharatanatyam sometimes. Uh I think it works very differently for uh, every artist. for me and and every on a daily basis also it, i like to have the kind of freedom to choose what i want to do in the riyas time especially when i am dancing alone mm-hmm. because i have had uh, kind of a training in ballet and also modern dance for the particular uh, work um, i do lot of things which are non classical and that really helps helps me to uh, find my own uh, movement patterns mm. and ultimately that helps me in executing some of the adavus differently uh, with little bit of more grace i think with a little bit of more flow uh, innovating new adavus 
I don't think I have done that. Mm-hmm. There are so many. Uh, I, I heard this uh, from I think Bhim Singh Joshi sir had uh, said in one of his interviews. You should be when whenever you are a singer, you are a performer. You should be like a thief. You just catch everybody's whatever they are doing. But to make it your own, that is the real struggle. Mm-hmm. It should not look like you are copying. True. You are influenced. And the same thing Shankarana also says. I am shamelessly. Shankar Gandhi Swami Anna once he had said, I shamelessly copy everyone. So it's not about copying. Okay, anybody can just copy the particular adavu, but to make it your own, it is different. So this particular movement is there in uh, Mysore style, but it is not done that way. Mm-hmm. It is my own approach of doing it differently. Uh, the, some some of the movements, and this is these are all the result of this uh, section that session that I have. with myself mm. without anybody's inter- interruption so this time that you are having with yourself solo when no one is watching in a in the most comfortable space non judgmental space is mm. actually when creativity blossoms max definitely I definitely think that's the uh, crux of this whole effort but sometimes prachi mm. even when you are alone you are in a very bad company <laughs> of yourself you will be judging yourself mm. the most should i be doing this what will people say uh-huh. you know that comes a lot for especially for us classical dancers you know it so that uh, one thing i always make sure that i keep it outside the dance class mm-hmm. even if somebody is watching me is absolutely fine it, it's ultimately uh, your joy right yes i I'm, i'm i'm still presenting my work which is very very within the framework of classical art form and i do not right now at least i do not intend to come out of it because this is what i think the saundarya means the aesthetics my uh, vision of aesthetics is mm-hmm. uh, i can definitely it's not uh, i cannot do anything out of the box but for me the box is little bigger okay. and also the choreography part mm-hmm. if i have doubt in my choreography if i am not sure what i'm going to do next uh i still have that you know blank face sometimes no i in fact thought <laughs> that you must be somebody who improvises on the spot and changes choreography i do it most of times when i'm doing solo okay when i'm dancing with two you more you get beaten up by the others if you do no uh, <laughs> my teacher had taught me lot of techniques when i go oh. when you go wrong just give some poses <laughs> So one of my performances or make it look like the others have made a mistake. I do not uh, intentionally do that but it happens <laughs> on stage and luckily most of the times choreographically I was in the center. Huh. So if I forget I give some pose of that particular and then <laughs> and <others manage. laughs> So you you kind of uh, preempted my next question which huh. was how do you support your riyas Huh. Uh, for the physical fitness hmm. so would you recommend any other form of training like there are many hmm. uh, dancers who engage in say um, core uh, core building core strength building. training hmm. weight training hmm. you mentioned calorie so that hmm. is answer but hmm. other than that do you recommend anything for dancers for fitness for dance fitness for dance i think for me it comes from uh, my uh, childhood trainings in different different uh, martial art forms and swimming and so many other things I used to wake up in the morning around five to go to karate class every single day uh, until I was in uh, my college, and from there school I used to reach one hour before to play cricket, and in between the lunch also we used to play cricket, and we stay back after the school and play cricket and come back and directly go to dance class three times a week, and eight o'clock eight thirty in the evening I used to have swimming. Mm-hmm. So this is a daily routine, and in between them, my mom used to take me to uh, painting class. Uh, sometimes uh, for rangoli uh, training sessions with aunties. How nice! <laughs> But that's the kind of holistic training that yes, you talk about. Yes, yes. You know? My mom made sure that I, uh, that I was completely occupied. How nice! Yeah, I was. I, I think I had a lot of energy, and she just did not want me to. Uh, you know, she wanted me to be a good human being, so she put me in everything. And she also, when she was a child, she wanted to do all these things. Mm. And it's an Indian middle class thing. Me, me, jo kar nahi pai, me, mera bacha karega. So, <laughs> and she found that happiness in that because mm. she travelled with me everywhere, wherever I performed or participated in. either uh, rangoli competition or painting competition 
or just uh, for dance performances you know even with students when we talk about no we end up giving them a lot of uh, or rather we stress upon they should do this they should do this but i think what point we miss out most often is it's actually the parents who play right. such an right. uh, such a pivotal role in True. getting them to do these True. things you know though i did i did all these things uh, from my 20s i think i have continued only with dance Uh, that that has been the main thing but apart from that i have i, I do lot of uh, karate and calorie based exercises mm-hmm. which is good for your core muscles we keep hearing this nowadays core muscle strengthening core muscle strengthening everybody knows about it but nobody implements that much uh, effectively when but they dance but you think it is important for dance very very important okay. even i did not know it was important but mm-hmm. i have i have seen the change in in the way i move mm. when i have started using my core muscles mm. uh, two things re- really influenced me was shobhna jaising dance company where they actually trained me to use my core well and uh, rukmini mm. with uh, i i danced with her for a couple of years so training with her and shobhna really made me understand the importance of using core muscles especially when you are rehearsing not more more than performing okay. and warming up is very very important everybody says this everybody knows about it but still we want to see if somebody says there is a shortcut mm. unfortunately there isn't you have to warm up you have to stretch you have to make sure that you are ready to do the adavos adavos can never be the uh, what you call it a stamina build yeah maybe you can build up the stamina but adavos can never be the stretching exercises Correct. or warm up sessions so there has to be a warm up De- then you move into the adavos yes. and then you go into your even if you are dancing for 10 more minutes hmm. you have to have that particular stretching otherwise that result will be seen when you are little older hmm. so connected to this again is there a ritual that you follow before you go on stage Definitely. because this is something hmm. that most dancers are very keen to know because you know you feel at times when you are not warmed up enough hmm. or you don't do the right things hmm. you're wobbly or shaky or yeah. nervous so many things happen hmm. when you step on stage hmm. so could you share what is it that you do before you go on stage i have never been shaky on stage just because i did not uh, warm uh, warmed up or uh, even stretched before but i could see the effect of that after the performance i will have uh, sore muscles mm. uh, lot of knee pain and it's uh, it's quite obvious because you haven't stretched the muscles that you are supposed to stretch before doing the arimandi we always have the stretching of the front part of our legs when you sit in arimandi for that long but we never give exercises to the back side of your thighs mm-hmm. so that needs to be stretched that is why i used to constantly have the knee pain it's completely uh, gone now only because of the stretching exercise because of all these awareness awareness you yeah. have to be really really aware of and to uh, pr- uh, avoid long term damage because if you want to continue like this mm-hmm. for a long term you have yeah. to do this now yeah b- b- that no pain no gain all these things mm-hmm. you know used mm-hmm. to be in my head okay so pain is that means i am doing correct things no mm-hmm. it's not you should not be having any pain when you are dancer actually so you have a set of exercises that yes, you do, I do before you before i either practice or when i go on stage now that also brings me because everyone when we talk about riyas is always think about thinking about the physical aspect the dancing aspect the nritya aspect but what is uh, which i think is your usp is your choreography and how you bring the element of humor so beautifully so naturally in most of your pieces mm. and the best example if i have to state is the recent chudare that you did with another brilliantly beautiful perspective and i think you are receiving a lot of accolades for that so congratulations <laughs> So how does one open their eyes ears and senses to getting this input into their choreography I think it comes naturally to me mm. Mm, it it's in my dna <laughs> my father is ex- i mean i am exactly like my father Yeah you were just going to say my father is exactly like me <laughs> Yeah so, uh, my son says the same thing <laughs> He is also going to inherit I'm definitely sure. he has already done that <laughs> and uh, i think i'm the only person who laughs at my father's jokes <laughs> my mo- mom doesn't even she ignores the jokes uh, altogether uh i think definitely it comes naturally to me and it's not like it's a not a conscious uh, decision to uh, put a humor in mm. in particular section just because okay it's becoming too draggy mm. 
it could just so, comes naturally i have to hold myself back actually in some some of the sessions yeah. because it is a serious composition yeah. and i cannot have jokes <laughs> but no so that's how the brain also works because i think even in your normal communication mm -hmm. like every few minutes there'll be one joke no, and then a lot of jokes are going thing. around in my head right now uh -huh. but i do not want to bring them <laughs> no you can make our audience is laugh it's okay no <laughs> i really want one. them to uh, take me seriously at once <laughs> when i say you have to warm up you have to stretch for years you have to it's not a joke <laughs> but but i think if i have to uh, sum it up what you're trying to also say is that keep your eyes ears senses open to what's happening around you because everything mm -hmm. because what is interesting is what you put into your choreography is something that happens to everyone Hmm. So it's not like oh this is very interesting he would have seen this happen to somebody and would have hmm. put it here no hmm. it's happening to everyone it's just the idea of how you bring it and adapt it to your idiom hmm. which is bharatanatyam right i and i think i, I don't think it happens with every composition hmm. every time i choreograph that humor might not come in one of uh, hara our production we hardly have any humor in that hmm. it's quite serious so it even in some some of the cases i want to put, bring humor in that it doesn't it doesn't work it doesn't, it doesn't allow work. it doesn't so allow me yeah. yeah just because somebody is doing Haan. it Correct. you don't have to do exactly the same but do your best hmm. yeah so how do you uh, describe riyas for abhinaya riyas for abhinaya ha <laughs> i think it's is slowly changing for me hmm. and last two years is completely different because i i i he keep hearing shruti taking classes mm -hmm. either for my students i'm watching the, her take classes and also uh, she is attending classes also at home so i get to hear about lot of ideas either from vibhav sir or from evinanna so all those things have uh, are coming naturally to me chupke chupke you know at least <laughs> But you know there is no stopping to where you can get ideas from. Yeah, yeah, the that's right. The fact that it's happening and you're aware and you're receiving it. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't find it that. wrong just because I'm copying. It's not a copy. It's getting newer thoughts from these artists, and in one lifetime you cannot do everything by yourself. but you are also acknowledging the fact that you are still a student i am think. always going to be a student That's otherwise true. i will stop growing mm -hmm. i and i can see that in some of the artists i shouldn't be saying and that scares me mm -hmm. and uh, that fear makes me you know trying to grow every single day as an artist if i i know that if i don't uh, adapt or if i don't change or if, I, if my work is not better than my previous one mm -hmm. i think i am doing something wrong i am either i'm not on the right path and it's never about okay i have not done uh, choreography well choreography is what uh, it's not just the movements right mm -hmm. choreography is not just putting the adobes together it is lot more than that especially when you call yourself as a choreographer of a dance performance whether it is a solo performance or group there is so many things are happening in that either uh, i'm not talking only about the script but the music Uh, the direction of it costumes yes very little uh, role it might play in bharatanatyam but it does it does of course because in in abha the way you consciously chose uh, those simple because it Khadi. works the minute you talk about ram uh, rama sita lakshman in the in your 14 years of vanvas and you see in uh, mm. jazzy kanjivaram mm. mm. somewhere it is jarring yeah. we accept it it's yeah. fine but it still works and it shows that you've gone uh, that extra level to give it a thought hmm. that this should be the costume right and that is what riyas does to me because the riyas is the quality time not only for the physical thing yes. there's a lot of discussion happening uh, amongst the uh, dancers uh, and if shruti tells what to do aditya most of the time she'll be telling what not to do hmm. that is really helpful okay. because most of the times i'll be doing something which is not required and he, he is somebody who just stands away and said no that's it mm. so he has a very good eye for it uh, and not just them musicians mm. they they play huge role because uh, they see each and every dancer mm. not only somebody who, who is just start learning dance uh, started learning dance 
but somebody who is a legendary artist they play for everybody okay. and uh, to get their approval is the greatest achievement mm. for me at least because then i uh, we get to know when the, they are happy with our work when they feel that kind of joy and this huge amount of uh, uh, input coming from them in the riyas time mm. and i think in that way i am very lucky that i have musicians who give their time it's luxury Absolutely. to have some artists who come and uh, practice with you even if there is no performance happening but they are also inspired that much to work with you because they are seeing the kind of investment of time mm-hmm. effort energy that you are putting into making Maybe. that final product the way it should mm-hmm. be and they feel like they contribute to it true and then again uh, i think one thing that you have uh, not mentioned uh, which i'll speak on your behalf is about the knowledge and uh, of music how mm. important is that because most often we connect dance okay only dance 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 but then when you know music well how it adds that extra luster so maybe mm. you can share about that. uh musical knowledge is different from how good you can sing mm. definitely i think uh, Aditya and Shruti both have uh, the eye for uh, music much better than me. Mm-hmm. I can sing better than them, but how much is too much? Mm-hmm. Which ragam should come here? And I am heavily influenced by Hindustani music mm-hmm. because of Belgam region, and uh, so I use lot of Hindustani ragas. So you don't have to be a singer, but you should just let like in the previous uh, question you said. you have to be open you have to be ready to try out if you don't try if you don't fall if you don't, then you will never learn you can never create the best piece when you want to start right so we ha- i have used bhatiyar ragam so many times that now i don't use it because i know that there are other ragams now mm-hmm. which i can use in a better way so yes musical knowledge is important but not necessarily you should be able to sing but how do you uh, suggest that one develops that ear for music by listening definitely by listening uh-huh. and it doesn't have to be hindustani or carnatic only all kind it can be anything you don't have to be bharatanatyam dancer 24/7 mm-hmm. you know it has never worked for me like that i cannot restrict myself having okay i have to listen to only classical music that to carnatic music I cannot do that. I enjoy certain artists. Uh, I mean, vocal concerts, Carnatic music, definitely. But my first love is Hindustani. Uh, but it doesn't stop me from creating work of Bharatanatyam. My liking towards Yakshagana music, mm-hmm. yeah, and uh, folk songs of Karnataka. Mm. Sometimes I tried off for Nagamandala, the one small Javali kind of composition. Mm. Gigi Pada we tried out. It is not that I am trying it out because okay I have to look differently, different from other artists or do something differently. But I genuinely like that kind of collaboration. Genuinely like the music that I am hearing, and I wonder how it would look if I do something like this or my body movement. or how i can adapt my uh, movements for this particular uh, singing so it is i think it's very important to have that personal connection otherwise it will not work so again to kind of now we are towards the end of it but this one question i have to ask you is hmm. as i see your lifestyle your your entire life you've kind of dedicated to this art hmm. and the house is like a gurukula but there is a gurukula that you are constructing in <laughs> chickle right okay so can you share something about how that idea started and where do you see it go um how it started uh, i do not know i think i always had this uh, uh, imagination of me being uh, i mean me dancing in the nature with waterfall <laughs> on big boulder and i keep having this uh, movie kind of script in my head you know we all do that especially when you're traveling in the bus i'm listening to a song and i think one day i think i was talking to my mom mm-hmm. and i told her see ask somebody if there are uh, any uh, empty spaces in and around belgaum mm-hmm. and luckily we found this it was very very cheap mm-hmm. compared to bangalore rates and the village is beautiful 
which has hardly 500 people at the most and most of them stay outside the village to work in different cities and uh, farmers most of them are chikle uh, the place which is little far away from the waterfalls it has and uh, here the idea of uh, the gurukulam is to create a space for artists to come and create something that they want to in the uh, beautiful uh, amongst the beautiful nature middle of beautiful nature and without being disturbed without thinking about anything else because there is no mobile connection whatsoever the uh, city the village of chikle has great influence of varkari varkari sampradaya mm -hmm. so once i was just uh, in my house uh, resting i started hearing the beautiful uh, bhajan from the temple when i went there each and every person was singing so beautifully in sur it was amazing and i was i just sat there and couple of times when i went they made me sing i know few uh, abhangs but i cannot sing in their range they are singing in d d sharp mm -hmm. and they naturally have that you know they have they are not trained but just by listening just by practicing and you can see pure uh, bhakti there so yes i really hope it happens soon and slowly i want to open it for uh, the children of that particular village and maybe uh, around to have a holistic learning experience for them um, i want to tie up with the primary and high school that which is there already in the village mm. and to see how i can uh, make the learning through the art mm. it's yeah. also a part of my experiment i mm. i want to see how a child will grow when art is the medium instead of uh, you know um, art is the language through it which it is uh, the child is learning so great we hope and pray that all these things that you mentioned come true and with that we come to my most favorite section of razriyaska and that is the rapid fire round okay <laughs> which i have a feeling you are going to is okay ready yeah. are you ready <laughs> yes Favorite classical dance style other than your own? Odyssey. Last movie you watched in the theater? I don't remember. That was a long pause. Yeah. <laughs> Which means you haven't watched a movie in the theater in a long, long time. Theater long time. Okay, that answers the question. <laughs> Eating before a performance or after a performance? Before. One thing from the Bharatanatyam Aharya that you will happily avoid. Ah. belt <laughs> maximum number of memes you've made in a day oh my god yeah five and with the two videos <laughs> i think it was the first day of lockdown <laughs> <laughs> i was too stressed i make memes when i'm stressed okay so when you share a meme you know yeah you should know, you should know. <laughs> okay highest number of continuous mandi adavs in a jati this question i thought of before i watched your music again performance so please don't even bother and say is there more than 12 of course uh, i think i have done close to 30 because kiran sir always used to make close to 100 uh, first let me do one slow motion of fainting and i i am not the only one who who used to complete it there used to be so many dancers female dancers okay. they used to complete whatever he is doing first speed second speed third speed third speed second speed first speed first speed second speed third number? speed i think it would have gone more than 100 sometimes okay we'll have a special video <laughs> where paash will show us 100 mandi adavs in a stretch so <laughs> yeah i mean it's a part of your uh, adav sessions okay utplavana adavu more of utplavana adavs the adavs that give brings on the stamina <laughs> घोड़े को पानी तक ले जा सकते हैं पानी उसी को पीना है विच मीन्स टॉक अबाउट इट बट यू हैव टू डू इट यस यस आर द वर्ड्स ऑफ द वॉइस ओके वी कंटिन्यू आर आई फायर इफ यू वर स्ट्रैंडेड ऑन एन आइलैंड द टू थिंग्स यू विश यू हैड अपार्ट फ्रॉम फूड एंड वाटर म्यूजिक फोन एंड द स्पीकर टू प्ले द म्यूजिक ओके ओके माउंटेन्स और ओशन डेफिनेटली ओशन Have you ever slept in a performance? Yes. <laughs> no, Did me. You? I, I, while performing, I have perf I, I have slept while performing. I was I was made to sit like Shiva. <laughs> I have slept. Really? 
Forever, yes, I have. I was a child. Yeah. So that was like an unexpected answer to my question. I was a child. I was definitely. wanting as an audience, which also audience I definitely I have slept. This is yeah. this is the next level. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Social media a boon or a bane? Boon. Number, Number of cats, cats you had as pets? Four, five. Now I have four. Yeah. Okay. That one aspect of your dance you feel you never practiced enough. Abhinaya. Mm hmm. Your most memorable on stage blunder. This is not like a rapid fire, you can take your time. I always cherish the blunders on stage. <laughs> but which one if you have to share one? Uh -huh. Yes, once uh, we were using iPad to play the music and it was uh, set on the face recognition. Oh. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, Aditya was using that and he had forgotten his uh, code. <gasps> And he had already put the makeup of uh, Virabhadra, where he puts a lot of eyebrows and everything. So it stopped. <laughs> it refused to recognize him. So he had to remove the entire makeup. And I have seen yes, it. it has oh happened. And this is t just ten minutes before the show. <gasps> so he took off his makeup. Yes, he yes. did a face yeah. recognition and yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we have a special addition to Raz Riyaska season two, which is only for Parshanath. Okay, oh, yeah. so this is only Parshanath special. Okay. Considering your love for Hindi movies, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, since you're a Bollywood junkie, I know you you know these dialogues. So I'm uh -huh. going to give you a dialogue, and you uh -huh. have to complete it. Okay. This is your test uh -huh. for love of movies. Oh my God. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Ready? I think so. Dosti ka ek usool hai, madam. Dosti mein no sorry, no thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> That's it. Then, kabi kabi kuch jeetne ke liye kuch harna padta hai. Or har ke jeetne wale ko. बाजी करके अरे क्या बात है डॉन का इंतजार 12 मुल्कों की पुलिस कर रही है पर डॉन को पकड़ना मुश्किल ही नहीं नामुमकिन है ये बाबू मोशाय जिंदगी बड़ी होनी चाहिए हां लंबी नहीं यू गॉट दिस वन आनंद पुष्पा व्हाट आनंद नो या बट पुष्पा हां पुष्पा के ये पुष्पा के साथ बहुत सारे डायलॉग है Pushpa, mujhe push mat karna. Anything like that. Pushpa, wait. Uh, Pushpa. You did the action, I thought. Yeah, you... uh, but I forgot the. I uh, hate. Pushpa, I hate tears, Pushpa. Ah, yes, yes. Yes. Rishte mein to ham tumhare baap lagte hain. That was. That used to be uh, my karate class, you know. So I used to call the Shansha sir. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, Prachi. You have done a lot. Officially, you are a Bollywood junkie. I can yes. tell that. <laughs> but on that note, we should really thank Pash for sharing all the wonderful things that he spoke about on this episode. So, thank you very thank much you, for thank this. Thank you, Prachi. Thank you once again. I enjoyed it. Thank you. When one uses the word secret, one feels it's something that should not be shared. It should be guarded. But why should knowledge such as this be guarded and not shared? If shared, it will only result in making better and more dedicated artists. And that, in turn, will only benefit the art. We are fortunate to have such artists in the series Raz Riyazka, who are breaking the notion of their Riyaz being a Raz. Raz Riyazka.